suffer. For instance, even when they meet together to celebrate some established patriarchal rite, such as a wedding, baptism, birthday, and so on, one of their great diversions is trying to bring one another into this state. It is lucky that they do not know, and let us hope that they never will know, any other method than the one discovered for the first time by those beings of the community of Italy, the Abbot Padrini and the Dr. Bambini, namely, that of gazing at a shining object, by which means, as I have already told you, certain of them can indeed be brought into this, concentrated hypnotic state. Chapter 3-3 Beelzebub is Professional Hypnotist Beelzebub resumed his tale as follows, When I existed among your favorites as a professional hypnotist I carried out my experiments on their psyche chiefly by means of that particular state which contemporary beings they're called a hypnotic state. Single quote to bring them into this state, I had recourse at first to the same means used by the beings of the Tikliamitian civilization for this purpose, that is to say, I acted upon them with my own, hand led on. But later, as the being impulse called, love of kind, frequently arose in my common presence, I had to produce this state in a great many three brain beings there not only for my personal aims but for their benefit as well, and since this proved to be very harmful for my being existence, I invented another means by which I obtained the same effect without the expenditure of my own, hand led zoin. My invention, which I immediately put into practice, consisted in inducing a rapid change in what I have called the extent of the filling of the blood vessels, by a particular way of hindering the circulation in certain blood vessels. By means of this hindering I was able, even while the mechanized tempo of the blood circulation of their waking state, was maintained, to bring about at the same time the functioning of their real consciousness, that is, the one they call their, subconscious. Single quote. This new means of mind proved to be incomparably superior to the one still used today by the beings of your planet, which consists in making the person they hypnotize gaze at a shining object. Of course it is possible, as I have already told you, to bring them into that psychic state by making them look fixedly at a shining object, but this method does not work with all beings there. Far from it and the reason for this is that, even though fixing their gaze on a shining object may bring about a change in the extent of the filling of the blood vessels, the chief factor for this change must be their own intentional or automatic concentration of thought and feeling. Concentration can only be obtained from an intense expectation, or from a process taking place in them which they express by the word, faith, or again, from the emotion of, fear of something about to happen, or finally from those passions whose functioning has become inherent in the presence of these beings, such as, hate, love, sensuality, curiosity, and so on and so forth. That is why in beings who are called, hysterical, who have lost for a time, if not forever, the ability to concentrate their thought and feeling, it is impossible to bring about a change in the extent of the filling of the blood vessels by having them fix their gaze on a shining object, and hence it is impossible to induce the hypnotic state in them by this means. With my invention, that is, a specific action upon the blood vessels, 
with themselves, it was possible to bring into this state not only anyone you please of these terrestrial three-brained beings, but even many one-brained and two-brained beings breeding there, as for instance various, quadrupeds, fish, birds, and so on. As regards that impulse of love of kind, which led me to seek a new means of bringing your favorites into this state which had by now become proper to them, it arose and gradually became dominant in me chiefly because, during this period of my therapeutic activities, the ordinary free-brained beings of all castes everywhere soon began to love and respect me, regarding me almost as one sent from above to help them free themselves from their pernicious habits, in short, they began to manifest toward me their most sincere, almost genuine being impulse of Ospolniku, or, as they say, appreciation, and gratitude. Nor was it only those I saved and their closest relatives who showed this, being Ospolniku, or, gratitude, toward me, but almost everyone who was in contact with me or heard of me in one way or another, with the sole exception of those professionals who were their physicians. These latter, on the contrary, hated me intensely and strained every nerve to impair the good feelings which ordinary beings had for me, and they hated me simply because I soon became their serious rival. Strictly speaking, they had every reason to hate me, it was only a few days after my therapeutic activities began, hundreds of patients attended my daily consultations, with hundreds of others knocking at the door, while my poor rivals had to sit for days on end in their famous, consulting rooms, anxiously awaiting any odd patient who might stray in like a, lost sheep. And they waited with such impatience for these lost sheep because some of them could be transformed into what are called milch cows from which they milk as was already customary there that's something they call dough in all fairness to them however it must be said that without this dough it has become quite impossible to exist there in recent times, particularly for those contemporary three-brained beings who become famous physicians. And so, my boy, as I have already told you, I began my activities as a physician hypnotist in the center of the continent of Asia, in various towns of Turkestan. I stayed first in towns of the part of Turkestan which was later called Chinese Turkestan to distinguish it from that part which, after its conquest by the beings belonging to the large community of Russia, was named Russian Turkestan. In the towns of Chinese Turkestan there was a great need for physicians of my specialty, because at that period there had developed more intensely than usual among the three brain beings breeding on that part of the surface of your planet two most pernicious, organic habits, which had become proper to them to acquire in their presence. One of these pernicious organic habits was this smoking of opium, and the other was the chewing of anasha, or, as it is otherwise called, hashish. As you already know, they obtain this opium from the poppy plant, and hashish is extracted from a surplanetary formation called chakla, or hemp. And so, at this period of my activities, I existed at first mainly in various towns of Chinese Turkestan, but later on, circumstances so fell out that I preferred to stay in the towns of Russian Turkestan. 
Among the beings of Russian Turkestan, the first of these pernicious habits are, as they sometimes say, vices, namely, the smoking of opium, was almost non-existent, and the chewing of a nausea was even rarer, but on the other hand, the use of what is called Russian, vodka, was in full flower. This harmful product is obtained chiefly from the soplanetary formation called the potato. Single quote. From the use of vodka, just as from opium, and a nausea, not only does the psyche of these ill-fated free brain beings become utterly farcical but, in addition, certain important parts of their planetary body little by little degenerate completely. Here I may say that it was just at the beginning of these activities of mine among your favorite set, in order to further my investigations of their psyche, I began keeping those statistics, which later so greatly interested certain very saintly cosmic individuals of the highest gradations of reason. Well then, my boy, while existing as a physician among the beings breeding in the towns of Turkestan, I had to work so hard, especially toward the end of my stay there, that certain functions of my planetary body began to get out of order, so I started to consider how I might give up my activities, at least for a while, and do nothing but rest. I could of course have gone home to the planet Mars for this purpose, but there arose before me my own individual, being Dinsonero, that is, my being duty toward the, essence word, I had given myself. And the, essence word, I had given myself at the beginning of my sixth descent was to exist among your favorites until I had finally made clear to my reason all the causes of the gradual formation in their common presence of that exceptionally strange being psyche. And as I had not yet fulfilled this, essence word, I had given myself, not having had time to learn all the details needed for a full elucidation of the problem, I considered a return to the planet Mars premature. But to remain in Turkestan and organize my existence in such a way as to give my planetary body the required rest was not possible because in almost all the beings breeding on that part of the surface of your planet, both in Chinese and in Russian Turkestan, there had already been crystallized, either through personal perceptions or from the descriptions of others, data for recognizing my appearance and by now each of the ordinary beings of this country wished to speak with me, either about himself or someone close to him, regarding one of those pernicious, vices, and the means of deliverance from it, means in which I had happened to become such an unparalleled specialist. What I then devised and earned out to escape from this situation had the result that Turkestan, concerning which, there were fixed and will always be preserved in my common presence data for pleasant memories cease to be my permanent place of existence on your planet during this last stay of mine, and thereafter the cities of their famous Europe with their cafes serving a black liquid, made of nobody knows what, replaced the towns of Turkestan with their chaikanas and their delicious fragrant teas. I decided to go to the country on the continent of Africa which is called Egypt. I chose this country of Egypt because it was at that period an ideal place for resting, and many three-brained beings who were well off, as they say, went there for that purpose from all the other continents. On my arrival I settled down in the city called 
Cairo, and very soon organize the external form of my ordinary existence so as to have the rest needed by my planetary body after those intense and strenuous labors of mine. Do you remember my telling you that I went to Egypt for the first time during my fourth descent to the surface of your planet in order to collect, with the help of several beings of our tribe existing in that country, a certain number of those accidentally arisen, misconceptions, called, apes. I also told you that I inspected many unusual works of architecture there, among them that original observatory for the study of cosmic concentrations which had greatly interested me. By the time of my sixth descent, scarcely anything remained of all the numerous interesting constructions of the past. They had either been destroyed by the beings themselves during their wars and revolutions, or had been covered over by sands. These sands were a consequence partly of the great winds. I have already mentioned. Mentioned and partly of a planetary tremor which was later called by the beings of Egypt the al earthquake. During this planetary tremor, an island then called Sayapora, situated to the north of a still existing island named Cyprus, gradually, over a period of five terrestrial years, sink into the planet in a very peculiar way and while this process lasted, extraordinary, low, and high tides, as they are called, were produced in the great spaces of the surrounding, Salutoria, as a result of which vast quantities of sand from beneath the Salutoria rose to the surface of this terra firma, and became mixed with the sand blown there by the winds. But do you know, my boy, while I have been telling you all this about Egypt, it has gradually dawned on me, and my whole being has finally become aware, that I committed an unpardonable error in the course of my tales about the three brain beings breeding on the planet Earth. Do you remember? I once told you that not one of the achievements of the beings of past generations had ever reached the beings of subsequent generations. Well, I am now aware that I made a mistake about this. During my preceding tales about these beings who have taken your fancy, not once was there recalled in my being associations an event that took place just the day before my final flight from the surface of that planet, and which proved that after all something did reach even your contemporary favorites from the achievements of the beings of the remote past. The emanations of joy that arose in me at the moment of my pardon by our omnipotent all-just creator endlessness and from his gracious permission to return to the bosom of my first arising must have prevented me from absorbing that impression with enough intensity to bring about the complete crystallization and the corresponding parts of my common whole of the data that can engender in beings. During being associations evoked by manifestations of the same source, a repetition of what has previously been experienced. But just now, as I was speaking of this contemporary Egypt, and pictures of certain localities that had pleased me on that part of your planet were revived before my being sight, the faint impressions I had retained of this event gradually became coded into a definite awareness, and came back clearly to my memory. Before telling you about this event which can only be described as deeply tragic, and to give you a clearer representation of it, I must speak again about the three brain beings of the continent of Atlantis who had founded the learned society under the name of Octan. 
Inserting members of this society who already had some idea of the sacred omnipresent Okadano discovered, by persistent labors, how to obtain from their own atmosphere and also from certain surplanetary formations each of its holy parts separately, and how these sacred, cosmic, force-bearing, substances, when kept in a concentrated form, could be useful to them for their scientific experiments. The learned members of this great society also discovered among other things that, by means of the separately localized third part of the omnipresent Okadano, namely, the sacred, neutralizing force, or, force of reconciling, they were able to bring a planetary, organic, formation of any kind into such a state that its presence would conserve forever all the active elements contained in it at the given moment, in other words, they could suspend and even completely stop its inevitable what is called, decay. Single quote. The knowledge of the power to accomplish this passed by inheritance to certain beings of Egypt, namely, those initiated beings who were the direct descendants of the learned members of the Afghans. Well then, many centuries after the loss of Atlantis, beings of this Egypt, starting from the knowledge that had reached them, succeeded in preserving the planetary bodies of certain of them forever, again by means of the holy, neutralizing force, of the sacred Okadano, in a non-decaying and non-decomposing state after the sacred, Rasquarno, or, as they say there, after their, death. Single quote. To be sure, by the time of my sixth visit to that planet, all the beings and everything that had been in this Egypt during my former visit had entirely ceased to exist and not even the slightest notion of any of this knowledge remained but the planetary bodies to which they had applied the aforementioned means were still intact and exist there even up to the present. And contemporary beings call these surviving planetary bodies, mummies. The transformation of planetary bodies into mummies was accomplished by the beings of Egypt very simply they kept the body destined to this purpose for about half a month in what they call castor oil and later they introduced into it the sacred substance force dissolved in a corresponding way. Well, my boy, according to the research and investigations of one of our countrymen who exists there to this day, and about which I was informed by a paragraph after my final departure from your planet, it appears that just when a process of reciprocal destruction began between the beings of this Egypt and those of a neighboring community, the existence of one of their pharaohs, came to an end now the beings whose business it was to preserve forever the bodies of meritorious beings were unable, owing to the approach of their enemies, to keep the planetary body of this pharaoh in castor oil as long as was necessary, that is, for half a month nevertheless, they put this body into castor oil, then placed it in a hermetically sealed chamber and Having dissolved the aforesaid sacred substance force in a certain way, they introduced it into the chamber also, in order to obtain the desired result. It transpired that this sacred force effectively accomplishing what they had expected was preserved in this
perhaps, my dear Hassan, you already know, as to all the responsible beings of our great universe, whatever their degree of being intelligent, even those who are still in the second half of 